Guadalcanal was our first landing in the Pacific. And we hadn't quite got all the pieces of the puzzle together there. And, and of course, the other one of the things that was very difficult there, the question of uh, sea superiority, I guess you could say, was very much in doubt. We, we didn't own the ocean around Guadalcanal as we did at later battles. And so there was constant naval attacks between our forces and the Japanese. It was an unopposed landing. The, we got ashore and captured the airfield, which we named Henderson Field in the honor of one of our marine aviators lost at Midway. And what happened was we were able to land over an open beach unopposed, and everything went reasonably well. The fighting that occurred occurred mostly later. Uh, Guadalcanal, we had the LCPL, and we had an LCP uh, and LCMs, but no LCVP hadn't been developed yet. We had made practice landings at uh, Onslow Beach in North Carolina over and over and over. Uh, we made so many practice landings and offloaded uh, into uh, landing craft. The mortar platoon and machine gun company, we had to have the ramps. Uh, we had a lot of Higgins boats for the rifle companies that had no ramps. Now we did make some practice landings with them with the mortar, but it was it was almost impossible to uh, get a base plate up and over the gunnel of that thing and uh, uh, into a water that was uh, uh, waist deep and all, you know. It just was nearly, nearly couldn't be done. The training was always get off the beach, that's basic. Uh, you're, uh, you're to come ashore and you're to get off the beach, spread out uh, as much as possible. The, the life aboard uh, a, a troop ship is so bad that you're anxious to get off of that damn troop ship. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you're blown off of it. But you know, you're, you're packed in there like sardines. You uh, are on that thing week after week after week with no fresh water showers, no way to wash your clothes, uh, two meals a day. We were so young and so stupid and we had no concept of what war was supposed to be like or anything. No, uh, we were not nervous. We figured that somebody knew what was supposed to be done and that uh, the good Lord would take care of us. But as far as sitting around chewing on our fingernails, there wasn't any of that at all. We were really happy to get off of that thing, even if it meant we were gonna be killed. We weren't, we weren't nervous, we just wanted off of that troop ship. Where we landed, the uh, the coconut trees came right down to the beach. And I remember it was black sand. We came out of the uh, ramp, and there was a rifle company of guys sitting on coconuts, opening them and laughing at us, because <laughs> we we just knew that we would all be killed in the first few minutes, you know. And they were sitting there laughing at us, so we joined in and started opening coconuts. Uh, the Japanese had no troops on there when they landed. It was just uh, maybe uh, engineers and the rest of them were Korean workers. And it took a right good while before they got many troops on there. The first ones came on, they, uh, I think about a thousand, they were going to kick us off. Then we left those coconut trees behind us and uh, walked on uh, through some grass and uh, scrubby jungle. They had run into a uh, stream that they could not cross, and we called it the uh, Tenaru. There was a corpsman who said, oh, I had been up there yesterday. I know exactly where you are, up on the Tenaru River. So uh, I said, uh, well, where is it? He said, well, I'll tell you. He said, there's quite a few Jeeps running around, and if you you grab a jeep or ask him to give you a ride up to where each company is, tell them on the Tenaru River. The Tenaru uh, 
uh, episode really began uh, uh, days and nights ahead of time because uh, there was night after night after night there when nothing happened. Uh, I say nothing happened. Uh, uh, you spend the whole night listening. They had given us 55 rounds to last for the night, and only you could fire it on it. And they said when you had the, the, the uh, gift of an opportunity, meaning when a flare went off and you could see the Japanese, you could fire it, but you can't just keep firing and we'd be out of ammunition a half hour. We knew we were going to get attacked that night, and we were all very set up and uh, the Japanese, when they came across, they came across almost, uh, you, you might say, in a, a group of just crazy uh, banzai charge screaming and yelling. And, and we fired it, and uh, all the machine guns, what have you, opened up on the Tenaru River. And it was a, a pretty lively action. When the battle commenced, uh, it was different. It wasn't friendly fire or somebody had heard a cow or, or somebody had uh, uh, heard a iguana uh, or something. I mean, the whole world erupted uh, up and down the, uh, the lines. Every once in a while when a flare went off and you could see Japanese, we would fire this, this 37 millimeter cannon with a grape shot and uh, you could see them, and when you fired it, all of a sudden, it was all clear. You couldn't see any Japanese, and uh, it wiped them out. It was dark, but uh, there was a lot of flashing from all the uh, fire and all. There was no cheering or anything like that following the battle. People felt pretty happy that we would uh, won it, but uh, you could look out there and see all these bodies, and. Uh, it makes you think uh, a little bit how, uh, you know, how short life can be. They look like raggedy ass Marines. You know how that is. The clothes are half worn out and the shoes are half rotted off and they already begin to lose weight left and right. They were glad to see us because we brought 10 units of fire. A unit of fire is uh, all that one division can shoot up in one day. We went aboard Higgins boats and went up the beach. Uh, it's a pretty good ways uh, to a place where it's Mount Austin. And we landed on a post and forced our way in, but we got very short distance until we ran into great numbers of Japanese. And Fuller found out we were in trouble and he came off the Metanica. He had one company, one of our companies on the Metanica yet and got in touch with one of the old four stack of destroyers. And they had five inch guns and they had a battery of five inch guns. So they were uh, talking to each other about semaphore, that's the flag. And we forced our way back to the beach. The Coast Guard came in and picked us up. That was when a man named Monroe and the Coast Guard was awarded the Medal of Honor, the only Medal of Honor a Coast Guardsman ever got. He was instrumental in getting his boats back in in time to pick us off that beach. It was a real snafu. If Chesty Puller had not been able to evacuate those Marines, the Japanese would undoubtedly have overrun and slaughtered them. The worst thing I ever went through in my whole life was October 12, 1942. Two battleships, four cruisers, and a bunch of cans pulled in the slot and dropped anchor and just proceeded to shell the hell out of us to the tune of about 1,014 inch, and I don't know how many 12s and 10s, and nearly everybody on the island had concussion of some kind. And uh, those big rounds that land close to you, and you'd bleed from the nose and the mouth. That's when I lost my hearing. We put everything we had in it, and so did they, because whoever the powers to be knew that who won that thing was going to take over the war.